35 foot. With it was, it was yeah. spray painted on the snow. <laughs> I went out there today. On the snow, yeah. yeah. The nice pink lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't see anything with the foot of snow on the ground, but you could see the pink lines. <laughs> record, Jack Sullivan, Sullivan Engineering Group. I'm here with the owner, um, Steve Bell, and his wife, Rosemary, is an owner as well. And they're looking to construct a two-story addition over what's predominantly the existed, the driveway. It's over a paved surface. The wetlands, which are over here, were defined by a, a, a good topographical break uh, behind, behind the shed. And the closest point of the addition to the wetland is 60 feet. Uh, there'll be no trees to be cut down. Um, there will be, uh, they're doing some uh, a driveway turnout, but that's outside the 100 foot buffer zone to the wetlands here. There's only minor grade changes um, associated with the addition. The, the worst case is a one foot fill in this area. Um, we're proposing a thousand gallon dry well with 24 inches of crushed stone surrounding. Uh, the addition will be hard piped to this dry well. That, that's about it. It's, it's pretty, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's going to be a slab on grade construction. It's not a full basement. Um, and this, this little bump out in the back, that's a second story bump out. That, that's, that's not part of the footprint, but um, that's on the second, the second floor bump out. We went around the corner and we saw another home that had just had an addition that looked very similar to that. Yeah. yeah. Was it 58, uh, 58 Haystack? No, no. Old uh, Farm. Old Farm, farm. that was the next row. Yeah, right. The big addition. Jack, where was the fill uh, going to happen? Right here. Okay, and, and, and the application said it was less than six inches, but now it's, that's changed to. It's, it's less than six inches everywhere. On their driveway, there's one spot that they had major settlement take place. Mm -hmm. It dropped like eight inches in one corner. We don't know if there's a sinkhole there or what. But that, that's basically the only spot. Everywhere else, we're basically matching grades all around. What's the, what's the um, uh, impervious additional square footage? Did you, did you I, I, um, I didn't calculate that, but we're removing um, 200 square feet of pavement that, that's existing driveway. But you're so building proposed addition on like top of that, so it's effectively plus. no real change in bird's eye view impervious. Right. And you can see the driveway is all right here. So there's a little bit of increase in impervious here. So I would say the net change is probably zero. But we put the dry well in since you guys like to see drainage put in. So we offset any increase with that anyways. Right. Are we in the aquifer protection? No. It looks about 500 square feet of restriction. And it's perfect, 400 square feet, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, this, that's this one, yeah. Which is 7 by 10 and 17. That, that was paid. That's paid. That's coming out. Chuck, did you have something? You just do the, the math. That's uh, 19, yeah, I asked a couple of questions already. Yeah. The, 26 so times 17. You're, you're like locking this addition no, down it was on the driveway, but that corner where it says PRD, and then it gives a number of 95-3 or yep. times 3. That driveway area is needed. You have to, that remains? Correct. They wanted to have some, this is not a garage, so that this is just an addition. There's no garage associated with it. They wanted to have a, a parking space along the side, and they, want, they wanted two here, and then that way if someone's in this spot, they can get out with being blocked in the driveway. So it's, it's really just one car parking here, mm -hmm. 9 by 18. So, uh, quick question, just so I understand. You're, you're saying you're not going to add a lot of fill. Correct. Um, so that 95.3, that's the height of the slab? Correct. It has to, well, the existing basement's at 96.18. Yeah. So the, the, the new slab will be at 96.18, and then we're about eight inches down on the outside to 95.3. But the existing grade is around 93, 94. In this corner, 
but yeah. everywhere else it's around not see how it's 95 oh, okay. 67 everywhere else that's just the one okay. low spot on so the so that's not okay. we're, we're basically gotcha. matching the grades okay So um, how are the roof leaders connected to the dry well? Do they go underneath the existing driveway? How, how is that happening? Correct. They'll go underneath the existing driveway. Do you think you're going to have a sufficient slope? On the, on the roof that? drains? Yeah, as long as they have half a percent. I, this, I'll have at least two feet of cover on these pipes because the dry well is going to have to go down until we get to virgin soil, so there's probably... Um, you know, a foot of topsoil, a foot of subsoil, and then it, it will go in the ground. So there'll be at least two feet of cover over over the drains. So they're going to they're going to be able to like horizontally drill underneath the driveway to do this. No, this they'll is be like dug. 15 they'll, feet, isn't it? They'll they'll be dug because that pavement they're going to remove the existing pavement. Okay. Remove it. Okay. Because we have that low spot, they're going to have, to, and then they'll put the pipes in. Then they're going to bring in clean gravel then put new pavement So down. it includes a, a completely repaved driveway. Completely repaved. And regraded. Yeah. I just have a design question, just because I don't remember if this is standard or not. Um, those um, leader pipes that lead to, from the, uh, from the addition to the basin, the dry well, um, is it a good design to have those um, like perforated? No. No. You, you because can, you just basically want conveyance of water. We just want conveyance. In some cases I have used perforated, but in this case, for this size addition, a thousand gallon drywall with two, I have plenty of storage volume. So yeah, sometimes, it, sometimes if I'm really in a tight design, I'll do perforated, but I try not to do perforated under paved surfaces. Because because the wetlands are it, around. It can introduce. 90. It can cause settlement over yeah, time. Yeah, with the, the freezing and the thawing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Because the wetlands are somewhere between 91, 92 and a half feet. Yeah. Which is giving me some indication of groundwater, and um, or at least the low groundwater, locally, and then the uh, up near the curb, the near SBDH. F and D, it's it's ninety four thirty one. So it's not a lot of. It's not a. I know this area. It's pretty flat. Very flat. And there's a catch basin rim out here at ninety three thirty three. Um, I mean, really, the dry well. Uh, I kind of looked at this as we're probably not adding any impervious if we balance it out, but it was something we just put in as an additional yeah. design feature since you usually ask for it, but. Yeah, we realize we have somewhat of a high groundwater table, probably why everything's like slab construction over there. So we didn't get out into the wetland, but um, it is pretty defined by uh, change in slope. Yeah. Chuck, do you have any additional questions? I, the only thing I was going to ask is the location of the dry well. Uh, what the reason why it's on that side instead of closer to the wetland was it because of the groundwater? I put it over there because I you, you try to keep it 10 feet off a property line and you want to keep it 10 feet away from the house. Um, so and I didn't want it over, uh, underneath the paved surface. So this seemed to make the most sense to put it in the location that I put it. I wouldn't put it behind the house. It was in a good spot behind the house. Why, why wouldn't you do that? Because I, I, I need to be at least 10 feet off a lot line. So if you look at the addition. You couldn't find a 10 foot off the house and the lot line in the back? Correct. Okay. Because the drywall itself is like 5 feet 8 inches wide. And if you try to stay 10 and 10, so you need to, I, I didn't have sufficient room there. Are the gutters uh, on the front, is the front of the house, the front face of the house going to match up and you're going to run the gutter continuously from one end for the existing addition to the new end of the proposed addition? Yes. And are you catching all that water into the drywall? Yes. Okay. But you're not doing that on the back because it looks like, does it jog in or I'm not sure what's happening in the back there? This is this is a small bump up, but we're, we're going to, the entire roof drain will, the entire addition will be collected by roof drains. Hmm. If they have to run the gutters and we pick up at this sp spot here to drop down, we can, but the intent is to have the entire addition collected. Yeah, if they couldn't pick up the back half, if that just, I don't know if they want to do this, but if it went 
off the back, closer to the wetland, that wouldn't be a problem for the porch. So. so I have any questions? Other questions? Do I hear a motion? Uh, any questions? Oh, any, any questions from the audience? Maureen? I move we issue a negative determination for 44 Haystack. Second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks, John. Thank you. So I did prepare this. Um, I think it's pretty close to what they said. I just didn't know that they're catching all the roof runoff. I could make some minor changes or we could bring it back for the next next meeting. It doesn't need much. I did prepare the uh, negative. Yeah, the negative determination. Make the changes if there's yeah. any minor ones. Yeah. Make the changes. Make them and then bring it back? No, or just, we'll decide yeah. tonight. Yeah. Are we supposed to have microphones in front of us? No, we talk loud enough, so it's... I, I think, think it's all picked yeah, up all picked magically. Up. Well, they, they usually put them on the desk. I just didn't know if they forgot or we don't need them anymore. I don't think we need them anymore. I don't have a paper clip, so, but here it is. That's okay, I can find one. I have a special on paper clips right over here. Oh, we'll let you take care of that then. Oh. Is it negotiable? Yeah. Sounds like Bob wants to do it then. All right. I didn't want to land on your computer. Chuck, instead of saying audience, I thought you said your audience. Oh, did I? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I was like, wow, it's a new year. Okay, we have a minor plan change, Notice of Intent 270-0673-46 Randall Road, formerly 25 Springvale Road, map 15, lot 7 and 8, MG Hall, and this is, uh, um... And Maureen, are you here for this? No, I wasn't asked. So basically, it's on lot 2, and they've changed the two by 16 foot deck yeah. um, to the other side on the back of the dwelling uh, and put the proposed concrete pad to the east and the deck to the west even though the narrative was it's opposite. Confusing. It was a little confusing. It was so confusing. I thought I didn't know what was wrong. I thought the deck me, goes but. north. The deck goes north, it's, not west. And well, the deck is on the north side of the dwelling, but they switched it from the east, east to side the to the west and put the concrete pad on the east, and that's basic. But they got it wrong. But they. So I guess that that's what where I'm left. I'm confused as to what they really like. The, where's the concrete pad right now? Because I didn't see it on concrete the concrete pad. Is see where the deck is. Oh, right next to it. No, the it's right. The, the concrete pad was where the deck was, and the deck was where is was where the concrete. Oh, you simply pad. switched it on the north side of the building. Correct. Correct. Threw me a little too. <laughs> any issues with that. It's still outside the 35 foot no structure zone. I don't have an issue. Check your questions, comments. You don't thought this was fairly simple. <coughs> Do I hear a motion? I move we accept the minor plan change. Second. All those in favor? Do we need to sign anything, Chuck? Um, it's not quite 720. You can do a certificate of compliance at 270 0677 116 Van Norden Road, map 39, lot 272. Vienna. No? No, you could, yeah. Let's do that. D um, Dave, did you take a look at I did. Uh, I did, and it was, I mean, it's, it's had such a change from what we went out before. It's, it's pretty amazing. Like, other than looking at the left-hand side of that structure, 
from the back, from the side, from the driveway, it doesn't even look like the same place. No, it doesn't. So, no. so um, my only comment is we don't know what time it is now. Can I ask a question before we uh, go on? I know that the, the, the people that are developing lot three at Springville Road had come before us about the, the retaining wall. Do, do they still have to come back to us with the yeah. plan change? Sure. Yeah, they just came to discuss it. Discuss it, it. Okay. right? Yeah. Informational. Because it actually is shown on the, the plan here. I was just wondering. They're doing a um, amended order of conditions. Okay. I. Uh, because each one of these houses has, has an individual mm -hmm. order. Of, no. They have to, they're going to amend the entire order of conditions, so they just, but, but only for lot three. Okay. So it's going to... And then they were going to try right. to get the developer to tie it all together, and they decided that wasn't going to happen. Well, my experience with how 14 Strawberry Hill Road went, where we had the homeowner taking over the project for the developer and nothing was finished, we had to assign, you know, who was in charge with that one. I asked um, Mark Hall to, to uh, you know, consider just bringing it in himself. And I said, we need one person to talk to, and this is over. And I think that's, what, that's why he did it. Um, but it's going to be a cleaner project doing it like this. So he is, sure. he'll amend the order of conditions. He'll retain the responsibility until it's complete. And we can talk to um, Mark and his, um, you know, any of his, his people that come in here about the landscaping plan because we don't want to just focus on lot three because the lot next to it we need to know where those plants are so they're not crowding them out everything has to work this is the one where the homeowner almost paid for the fair meadow uh, baseline study for us so because all the trees they, he was there was a lot of trees on that on the project they had originally 73 trees that they needed to plant so they, they really planted a lot around each uh, lot. So it's kind of almost overgrown. Hmm. We'll get to look at that again. <coughs> but Randall Road, uh, getting back to 16, Van Norton. 116. 116. My only comment is we found one granite bound. I was able to count the trees in the front. It looked like the big trees were planted. But the buffer strip, I couldn't see, and I couldn't see any other granite bounds. And that's not. You went there yesterday, right? We went there Monday. On Monday. Oh, oh, Monday. Sorry. Because oh, so you didn't walk the site. Well, how tall the granite bounds? One, 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 is, one, one is above the the snow, but the, it, the the ones further back, we don't know if they were flush. And if they were flush, we couldn't see them. Obviously, places. you're not going to find them in the right. foot of snow. Yeah, but maybe by next Monday. I doubt it. That could be. It's supposed to pour on Friday. No. Yeah, but that's not going to get rid of all the snow. And no. then it's going to freeze up again, so. But well, it's supposed to be 50. It takes, it'll take a, a bit more well, than just one day. The more inches of rain is going to drop of water than some frozen snowflakes. Right? We'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, but so, so we didn't see everything that you that you could check to get a certificate of compliance. Is, does the does applicant matter, have I a rush? The thing we saw was the fact that the house was finished and it looked really nice. It's just really not our concern. No, but the, it was amazing. He did take down the pine trees in the front. There was one standing all by itself, which was pretty tall. Um, it looked like there was a lot of, I thought it was more dense around that area. It seemed to be very open uh, onto Harold Ave. And um, I saw some, I think we saw some small plants, uh, shrubs. <coughs> there were winterberry um, that were planted along the, uh, uh, the stream. Now, um, correct me if I'm remembering wrong, but wasn't part of this project also going to include a massive cleanup of this area behind it? Because right now it looks like a totally separate parcel. It is a separate parcel. Okay, 
but wasn't part of our site visits for this project took us around back and was it that part of the original <coughs> property? Mm -hmm. It was part of the original property and then it was it was cut off of that. And that was that a conservation restriction that we that was placed on the remaining property because there was a lot of fill back there and then the I chip the truck and the <laughs> right. I mean, but what happened to all that stuff? Those are two separate parcels of, of land. But is that no, tied to this certificate no. of mm -mm. this order? No. Okay. Just, I, I do think it got cleaned up. I never saw that. But. So we, we did the ANRAD for that, but never did a notice of intent. To clean up all that debris? Well, yeah. I recollect do we have the electrical we wires and the I thought it was tied to this because this was the property that Maybe fronted that right. property. I, I just know that it was withdrawn. So and that other one has fronted John Harold did the other on street. Harold? Yes. Did they yes. Yeah, yeah, I do. Did they sell it to that development on the other side? That piece of property? All I remember is it being a disaster and us trying to put in there some codification of must be cleaned up. Railroad ties? Railroad ties back there? No. There's a wise potato chip truck. There's a wise potato chip <laughs> truck. And electrical wires going through the And that would have happened the trees. if the project was able to go through all the boards, but you know, somewhere it stopped. Something, something stopped this moving forward. I don't think it was that whole thing at one time was all the same piece of property. Correct. Right. Where that street is there and all those houses that are on that street, that right. was all one piece of property right. at one time. Right. So. I guess I don't remember. I'm sorry. I don't remember this getting subdivided into this one particular micro lot compared to what I saw originally. Yeah. But it is now. It, it is, is now. now. So there it is. All right, so we're not going to issue the certificate of compliance, is what I'm hearing. We'll wait till we can see yeah, further like back to. there. Because some of that debris might actually be right here. No, no, no. It is no. It's, no. No. I mean, I just. There's a wood bridge. I have no recommendation. I'm just saying that we weren't able to see some, you know, conclusive evidence that things were done. Well, then we need to That's wait. a good reason to not approve. Does not approving do anything? Un I don't know. I don't think we've heard from the, the owner. Nothing, you know, no other time constraint oh, is dependent upon that kind of. Yeah. It's a, well, he's trying to they're trying to sell it. And let's see if there's a bond on this. It's con the only reason why it's confusing is we don't ask for bonds for homeowners, and we may have considered this single-family house for a homeowner. Is it customary to ask for the, the positioning of the uh, stone bounds to be put yeah, on the Yeah, they're supposed to locate those. They're supposed yeah, well, to be located on the Yep, you're right. So we need the bounds added. So, I didn't know if it was a requirement. Or yes, it is. It was Jack, too. That was Jack. Yes. So, Jack just left. So, there were photos submitted, too. Just going to kind of. I see one of the bounds sticking up out of the ground on the photo. Okay, I see it. It's one. I'm yeah, not okay. sure exactly where that is on the plan. It's right where it was. There's a little shed left. It's kind of right off the deck, I thought. That's what it looks like. Maybe it's not towering back here. Flag. That would be the 
this. No, it's not on the wetland. It's off, it's off the wetland. Okay, yeah, I think it'd be good to see where the bound is on the plan. This is Yeah, that all there on the stage. That, this one here that's in the front, but with this one here that you can see in the picture, is probably at, at the turning point that's right near the front of the house. Well, the back of the it, house, the sixteen point three feet um, from the deck. I remember it being off the one corner of the deck. Yeah, I'm just looking at the other houses second. that are in there. Kind of looks like that. As you look past that bound, it almost looks like those are the houses that are on Main Norton Road. But may not be. Um, I, th I think we need the bounds on this. Yeah, I think plan. we do too. Especially because. So, so they built that. Just Sorry. Um, they built this house in the 25 and 35 because that was the grandfathered. Well, that's where the house the, was. Yeah. It already okay. was there. Yeah, yeah. It was already there. Okay. Yeah. So we can see. So we're gonna. So it says the plantings are in. I can see some of this stuff from the pictures. Obviously, the granite bound, the one we couldn't find, is on the fence post. And looks like the grass is established. I don't see a picture of the buffer strip. I might be misremembering that we asked for one. Yeah, so there should be another granite bound out by the shed. It's every 40 feet, and then one at the one past the shed on the property line. We need the bounds because that's really finalizes this drawing from my perspective. So there should be one that's right right near the corner of that shed, right? Well, yeah, somewhere between there, the one on the property line, and one somewhere between the the uh, post. In the corner of the house. Yeah, right there where it says twenty four two. There's one there, and there's one. There should be one on the property line. Mm -hmm. Chuck, if he's going out to, if he didn't get the survey, those surveyed in to put on the plan, and he's going out to the site anyway, maybe he could put one of those, um, like edge of driveway stakes, like a thin pole, right at the bound. Yeah. So, so when we go out, strip. we can see it. So what was we, up with these we, we didn't ask for a buffer strip. But we did ask for plantings. <clears throat> yeah, seven trees. Is this plot layout the results of a bachelor party or something? Oh, that's the. Uh, I mean, just see the way this thing's drawn. It, it, it's just a very peculiar shaped plot. Yeah, that's just what was left over after they laid the laid Did out. You've seen the, the original. Uh, yeah. Laid out the the development that's down this side. He's, no, he's, he has what he has. What he, he has enough for the replacement policy, those trees. We didn't ask for a buffer strip. We right. didn't, ask, didn't ask for anything else. So um, the planting, it's, it's just down to where the bounds and put them on the plant. Yeah. Right. Is that yeah. worth, well, the, the bounds not going to change. Does that matter? Why would we hold up the certificate of compliance if that's all that's necessary? You guys could sign it, and I could just ask them to go out and find them. And yeah. To have right. Jack put them on the plant. Yeah. 
I'm okay with that. At least that part's okay. done. Do I hear a motion? I move we sign the certificate of compliance for 116 Van Norden. Second. All those in favor? Item on the agenda. I just uh, have a clarification. You want me to hold the certificate of compliance until we have a new plan showing the location mm -hmm. of the grant box. Yes. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the ANRAD uh, 1503 Main Street, Map 60, Lot 11 and 12, Castellano. Is this the same one we got from your surveyor? Is this different from the one we got? We only got five from him. Did you, did you I bring, have plenty of coffee. Did you bring nine? Um, I was going to say oh, there's. Did you just bring two more? Chuck, there's. This is an original that's like. I have a bunch of copies. Also, just gave me another copy. So, okay. And I have another one. How many? I think you. I have enough. I think everyone has enough now. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have this one back. Okay. I, I have this too. I need you. Oh. Uh, we did change um, a few things in here. This one was weird. It went. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, so 13A, connect flex, 13A to 16A. Uh, and then 9A. 9A. Moved up, gradient six feet. Nine, nine, yeah, 9A moved, moved, up. moved up. We were fortunate enough to review the boundary really prior to this last heavy storm, so. Did a bunch of soils to verify the locations in different questionable areas. Especially that drain area near Wetland Flag 5A. No. Well, we checked that, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, we did checked Chuck, it. actually, I did check that in the, in the soil. The and soils were. Steve um, yes. did a soil, okay. and it was really pretty dry in there. The, the soils were indicative of a, you know, non-hydric condition. What was that flag number indicating? Five A. Five A. You could see. You could see it. It's drawn in. It's full of more beer cans and beer bottles <laughs> than moisture. Mm. That was man-made anyway. I still couldn't figure out. Up. What, what, what was I reading wrong up here? Number. In your main street. Yeah. This, I think how it was plotted on the plan was confusing. So this is 6B, 7, no, 8B, 7B, 6B, it, it, the numbers. Eight, 7, 6. How'd that happen? No. 5, 6, 7. I don't did know. you guys go out there the all at once or did you come back after like eight, seven, a month six, five. Half in The between? numbers, the labels are We've underneath had this the symbol. a number of times. Mm -hmm. Um, so what, what it is, Becky, is that the numbers go up and down from the, the line. Eight, seven, six, 
five, four. Right, so it makes sense if you count back from eight. So what had happened was when we originally flat flagged it, we started with one A, and we thought three, we covered enough two, of the lot that the surveyor okay. needed. So you needed a B line. Right, he, he wanted us to extend that line to Main Street, so that's how we extended with the B series. And this lot also has um, floodplain, bordering land subject to flooding, 100 year floodplain. Uh, the elevation is determined at 70, and that's also shown on the plan as well. Um, why is there a 10 foot vernal pool buffer? That must be the 100 foot buffer. It's a drafting yeah. error. Okay. Yeah, that's not 10 that's feet. That's not 10 feet. <laughs> no, it doesn't look it. <laughs> Just checking. It all boils down to the plan, right? Yeah. Well, that little squiggle lines the vernal pool. That's not much bigger than 10 feet. <laughs> So this plan is stamped by a land surveyor, not an engineer. So it's clearly just having the flood, flood zone elevation. You need to stamp it with an engineer if you want us to include that in the ANRAD. So do you want to come back with that stamp? No. Uh, that's already predetermined by the, the map. So I don't think that that will be an issue. I won't do it, and we'll pick it up on the okay. notice of intent. Sure. Okay. That's not a problem. And then you know make the change to the hundred foot. Oh, right mm -hmm. around the vernal pool. Okay. Is it a hundred feet? But it just says ten feet. Is that I missed that? It, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It is yeah, hundred. It, it says pretty, ten feet. Ten is a typo. Doesn't look like ten feet. No, it's not ten feet. Motion to approve uh, inland for 1503 and 1505 Main Street. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. So you want a revised plan with the vernal pool buffer? Is that what I heard, or is that just going to be noted? Should we? Yeah, well, when you can it, we do this when you file the notice of intent? Oh yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. It it doesn't. Doesn't matter to me. Sure. Is that that's good enough for me? That's fine. I'll just put it in the notes. Mm. Okay. Yes. No. What What's the change? Just the vernal pool. A hundred. It says ten feet. I, I can make that change. That's not significant. What about? And do you want to leave the FEMA? Problem here? Is that fine also? Okay. Yeah. Then we're set. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. I'll just I'll just draw it in. Okay, that's fine. Are we signing something? Chuck? No. No. Yeah, right. I have to. If yeah. I did this, Marie. I would Marie. Need to send it out to you guys because I didn't. Now I get your name wrong. I didn't recognize you because I didn't see it all bundled up with gold weather. She looked vaguely familiar. Oh, you I said, need to oh, that's who she is. No, I'm gonna prepare it, and I have to write down every single flag. Okay. And with this many, I need other people to look at it too. So no, since you haven't got it yet, right. it's not prepared. All right. And I will send it between the next two meetings. Okay. Um, next item is. Um, National Grid Gas Line Replacement Review, 273 Lowell Street to... Is this Harshawn? To Harshawn, 15 Harshawn. I went through on the map here, so I believe that's where we are talking about. 
That anyone can see that the black line. Yep. Uh, so this is just a review, and I think in the past we asked National Grid to come in and present to us, but since then they actually have standard BMTPs for the town of Reddick, which asks for you know any any storm drain any river, any opening they're going to use BMPs on. So I reviewed that or I've seen that before and as long as they include that, it should just be reviewed by the commission. We don't need them to present this. It's also on existing pavement and there's curbs in this area and they don't cross the Abijon. This works. Is this standard maintenance or did something happen there? I don't know how it happened. I, I guess they detected a leak and they're just going to, what they do is they trench it, they abandon the pipe in place, tie in the new pipe, and then bury it. Um, usually when they're throwing the same sand back into the existing hole, they're not checking it for any issues. So it's called cut and cover. It's, a, it's probably a one-day job. The only restriction I could think of, if I was going to get back to them on this, would be if rain yeah. is yeah, you know, we're going to need cast, storm we, drain. We wouldn't want to have this work. Well, so, are they putting a new pipe in? A new pipe? Mm -hmm. They're replacing the pipe. Take replacing more. something that's already existing. Yeah. I think the biggest problem that I in have the, there in the street right away. Right. I think the biggest problem they'll have there delay-wise is traffic. No. It's an awful place. Yeah, it's tough over there. Yeah. It's, it's crazy people coming out of uh, that street. Yeah. On the street, on the street. That's yes, cool. there are. Uh, roads are narrow and people are cold. Do, you, do they expect to do this? Uh, they, they usually serve up a few. I don't know if there's a date on that, but they probably they won't give you an exact date. But I can, I can ask. They'll tell me June something. It w wouldn't be around now. It would be. I don't know when better, it'll be. Better weather, hopefully. Okay, so just. I assume it wouldn't be around now when there's snow on the ground right. and all that. So no one knows, knows what's going on. So just so this work they're going to do under a pre-existing town-wide permit. No. This doesn't rise to the level of needing a permit. They're only giving us notice that it's happening. Okay. That's what they're asking. Does anyone think that this needs a permit? Only on that condition if they're doing digging and there's a crazy rain and we get a lot of silt look, going, going straight to yeah. going straight to a catch basin. So if rain and it goes is forecast within the out. next three days, they'll, they'll reschedule. Yeah. Okay. If they have a lot of sediment runoff, then they got a problem with us. You see what happened on Child Street? So the blue line is the Abajona yes, River, right? Yes. Uh, this this blue line, line right leaked. here is the Abajona. Well, that's the Waterville the Terrace, then there's Harshon. Water leaked into the gas pipe. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Harshon. where the old Lowell Street School used pipe. to be, right there where those fixed two houses are. Leak in the gas pipe and fix the water pipe. That that's was last week road, during the very zero top degree weather. Left. That's yeah. Harshon. That's in the Vale Terrace. Yeah. Right. And that blue thing you have outlined in the that's the corner of Archon and, and that Lowell. Is, that's just how I identify. Oh, but I just say those, those two houses right there, mm -hmm. they used to be the old Lowell Street School, in case you're not familiar with it. Oh, really? Yeah, there was a wooden building there. There'd be a school there, and they tore it down years ago. Okay. So, Chuck, how is the National Grid going to receive that from us? It'll be a correspondent from you? Yeah, well, we'll, I'll just email them. I've been working with the same two people for the last two years. Okay. So they're, they're, I guess they're, this is their area. And it's pretty good communication you've had with them and pretty yeah. responsive. Yeah, the and last couple of things have come in. And we actually just did a certificate of compliance that was for an old site. Um, okay. this, is, this is the same crew. So they're responsive. They're responsive. Okay. So you're only going to email them? You're going to send like I an could official call. letter? I could call. You want me to send them a letter? I, I, I think it just might make sense to send them an official conservation letter. It was discussed yeah, at the meeting. Discussed at the meeting. The biggest concern is 
Okay. I'll send a, an official letter. Make it official. You can't send one to make it unofficial. I would just hope they would respect <laughs> my authority and in in my but, letterhead and my email. Well, I think the email, too. Why wouldn't they? I, mean, I think the email, too. There but you go. I don't know. <laughs> Duplicate communication. No, that's all right. We'll get, do the letter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You sent us a letter. Yeah, the conservation. But it's, it's conservation conservation engineering? engineering working for National Grid. It's not National Grid. Oh, okay, okay, just okay. Okay. Right. CC Conica. Yeah. Letter. Okay. All right. And then yeah. the proposed gas service replacement. Oh, that's, we just discussed that. The yearly, um, operation the yearly and maintenance operational plan. plan. Yeah. I, I took a look at that, um, and really it seems to focus on the sensitive areas identified. And then I looked at that northeast corner of Reading, and as far as I could tell, the area contained within Reading for this right of way mm -hmm. looks to be upland. No, I don't think we're not concerned about that that in that corner when they're cutting through. Right. I mean, it's the, only the lateral that gives us some problems, which we encountered when we were on Two Beaver Road. Right. But um. So I also took the time to send an email to the Trails Committee and Kim Hunnishlunger, and um, she agreed that um, we had checked this many times. They know of nothing currently uh, that popped up that needs to be identified as a restricted area, and um, they're satisfied, but uh, I did tell them that through that to be the road work, that now we are in contact with, um, you know, National National Grid's um, team that actually goes out and, and does the uh, maintenance plan. So I, I do have his direct phone number. Okay. The um, property, so that's the town line okay. here, and the priority habitat goes down like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's not. I'll turn it on on this map as soon as I get there. See the priority mm -hmm. habitat. It's not really. It's like if this is our the right of way we're talking about. It's the right of way is the whole mode area, right? It's up it's that up in that Northeast corner. Northeast corner. Oh I see. Yeah, it's just right here. Right. Right there. Right. And so yeah, it's not here it comes. There you go. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know. Is that all upland? We gotta get back there. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I got my cross, I got no cross cut. That's, that's what it shows for Wetland well on the Redding Road. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. When, yeah, well. So there's the right of ways that just came in. Um, it's, it's the closest road. Oh, so. You can see the high points on that plan. And let me turn on the last layer. Is that is that Walmart and opposite? The Walmart and the post office. Yeah. So here's that the, is quite a trek in. Yeah, you can see that really well when you go past twenty eight. So you can see the Natural Heritage 
external pool, priority habitat. Yeah. Wildlife and species. What's the green hatched? That's the right of way. Right no, no, sorry, the light green. That's the wetland. And you're saying that really? you, don't, you don't see that as wetland. Um, uh, the no, way they to call this into all that wetland. is to look at the topo. And it's pretty flat out there, so I don't know what we're looking at anyways. It looks like it's low from here. So. Wish you made this map a little darker so I couldn't see it at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, I was like flat. That way you'd just be in the dark rather than confused. It's the closest road. Um, well, you know, right over here, we could. Are you guys going to gonna gonna check it out and road road talk road. to us at the next meeting? Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. maybe. I think, uh, I think there's a good chance. Yeah, we could go. That's perfect, right there. What is that? That's a uh, way to. Yeah, I think so. Uh, no, what's North Reading? No. no, that's North Reading. What's west of us? Linfield? Is that Linfield? Do you have a GPS? Yeah. Why'd you bring that in case you find something? Oh, you could, uh, unless your phone does it also. You can just take a picture. All right. Well, that's, that's, yeah. that's... I mean, obviously you see the swamp, but this is Sorry. mostly... This, this whole chunk of land up here is not ready. Yeah, it's not ready. <laughs> that's exactly where Don't we want to go. Kind of, that looks really close. Didn't you go out there with um, Harry? Right there. A couple years back? Right. Yeah, well, Eight? No. no. This is, this is we talked about it, but here. no. Oh. And then I talked about right. taking a drone out there. The swamp, so that's that line here. Right. Yeah, maybe you can use really, some of our money like to buy a drone. This. Yeah? You go on a payroll street, right. take a right on Chester. Okay. Um, they meet up here somewhere. So, Meadowbrook Golf Club, they're still... The next meeting will be in. Really? Yeah. Okay. And the other item on... We've got a um, mineral oil dielectric fluid on uh, South Street release. Or transformer. Did you take a look at that? Kevin? I didn't look at that. No, not yet. I didn't either. That was Sam's, right at Sam's Bistro, pretty much. Your neck of the woods, and um, I talked to the engineering department. It was it, there was three that came down in that storm. This was one, and in the back of that Sam's Bistro. I don't think it's called that anymore, but that's no, it's uh, facilities. Facilities. Yeah. So there's wetland back there that's jurisdictional under the old bylaw two indicators. Or one indicator? Well, there's, there's, one there's, indicator. There's, there's a wetland back there? wetland back there. That's not but a granite rock that that thing's built on. That that continues up that's over the hill to oh, Wakefield? No, the original, there's, the original there's, owner was, was out of his mind about how he couldn't have parking back there, and, and right. they went back and forth on it. I think it was um, Jeff Brim who represented him. It's literally... And there's uh, a wetland back there? Yeah. yeah. Way back there, there's a wetland. As wow. you get close yeah. to where the dumpster is, yeah, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's treed um, in there. I, the end of the park burned. pavement is a wetland based on the and there was a trash indicators, yeah. which instead of having two indicators, is just one. That's what, isn't that what it was when you first were on the uh, commission? What? It's like, just what like what's a, a wetland uh, indicator? It's just one indicator would create a wetland here in Reading when you first were on the commission, right? Like water or soil or oh, even back in like 1644 when it was incorporated. No, you're talking about in the 80s. It would be uh, hydrophytic vegetation. That's it. You didn't. You, yeah, you didn't really look at soils. So plants rolled. Real, real. Plants rolled. But we changed the bylaw, and it was something in the bylaw about. Yeah, but, but I don't think we had a bylaw way, way, way back then. In the 80s. Well, this was recently. This was in the last five years that it was in the bylaw that it was oh. there was like one indicator or something like that. So if I, I just 
Go ahead and ask about it. Yeah, it, was it, really it seems in, it, it seems almost impossible to me, unless there was some kind of a high pressure underground stream that was oozing up from the ground. That would have to be some kind of a unique contained crotch of rock or some depression. I believe there's because sensitive it, it, fern growing in back of that dumpster in locations. It's in not Spring like in spring fed or river fed or anything like that. It's I mean it's it's just it's like a catch natural catch basin for water that probably yeah, I can't I can't imagine what else is up there. I used to crawl over the thing when I was a kid. It's a granite rock. That entire area off that exit ramp. Mm -hmm. That's a cliff. You, I mean you get down high South Street to I forget the name of the road that goes over yeah, one twenty. South Street's like steep. Yeah. I mean it's it's like a mountaintop. I don't know how that could possibly be wet up there. But anyway, can. Can if it, it is, it is. I just in in our bylaw, it, you know, it's pretty um, covers. It, it's pretty. I don't, I don't know where to say this, but you know, an isolated wetland. I forget how, what's the size. It's 500 square, square feet, feet now. Yeah. So, it's a pretty small area. If you have a depression, the wetland? Yeah, if you have a depression and you have water, and you have the hydrophytic vegetation, and you're going to have the hydric the soils, even though it, there's so no inlet property? or outlet. Where is the catch basin located? Isolated means it doesn't I'm have an inlet. I'm looking for facility. Where is that? And, what if it's okay. a, and I'm not trying to it's be on. contentious here, but... What so what if it turns into a static, almost poisonous pool of, of water? I mean, because if there's no one in the realm, it, it has to get stagnant. Um, if it's got hydric soils, I mean, you know, uh, wetlands do function as filters. It's not going to sit there and be a stagnant pool. You're going to have drying season, you know, you're going to have drying times. The, the, the height will, level of water will go up and down, sure. I mean, you don't have stagnant areas in other wetlands either. Okay. Interesting. Is that what you're talking about? Right near Hopkins? 107 Main Street. Yes, you know what? Uh, didn't Al Couliard have something to do with some of the buildings back there? That, that jogs my memory, like when we were, I remember going out there and looking at it, like, and like you said, it's like, it's really a well back here. Um, it, it, but I did see, you know, there was a depression back there. Chuck, can I was surprised, it's, it's up on a hill, it's like near Bear Hill. Chuck, is this the GIS? Oh, yeah, this is not... Can you show the either. catch basin on it? If there was a no. jarring kind of an earthquake or something minor that okay. separated those rocks, that water disappeared and never came back, how would the status of that? Is this the bistro? Yeah. Casual There's wetland. The wetland. Um, would the be change forever? I mean, I think it would have to, to right? Yeah, you would change it and you, would, you wouldn't see the hydric vet. Yeah, Eventually it died. Eventually the, the, the plants would go back to an upland condition. The, the tricky thing is... No, the plant, if it's a wetland plant, it can't typically live in dry conditions, correct? Or yeah, will it? You, it can it, revert back to a... It, you'll see more dry, more vegetation that's indicative of a dry condition start to, you know, invade that area and the other ones to die out. But they probably wouldn't all die out. Um, you wouldn't see any water. What you would still see is the remnant hydric soils because those don't, they just get stuck there. Thank you. Yep. Um, so Chuck, do we have anything more on the agenda? Oh, wait, we, did you guys look at the um, meeting minutes? I did, I didn't have any comments. I, I wrote Chuck back, I didn't have any comments. It was one comment from Dave and he was but let's start with December 6th. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Sure. That was the full meeting, right? Yeah. Dave, uh, Dave, did you have any Dave comments? Dave had a comment. I'm not sure if it's December 6th or December 14th. It was December 6th. That uh, 
it was Anika that asked to remove the leaf pile and to seed it with upland seed mix or wildflower mix. So I'm going to change Dave Burnett to Anika okay. Scanlon if that's what Anika remembers. Now's the time to deny it. December 6th. No, I know, but which project? 738 Pearl Street. Uh, 738 oh. Pearl Street. Okay. Yep. And the only thing I added was, it's their backyard, let them choose which one they want to right. plant. Right, That's all I said. Mrs. Scanlon, how do you plead on December 6th? It's just thinking of the same thing. <laughs> if, if need be, we can refer back to the tapes. <laughs> <laughs> Hours, and then you spend the rest of your life watching those tapes. I'll tell you. I bet you somebody actually does. I don't, they must. I, I had people a librarian. Do. Recognized me when I went to her desk once. She saw you on the conservation commission. No I more questions needed. <laughs> oh, I love that show. <laughs> it's a reality it's show. Riveting. I, I, just, I don't think I, I don't think we're dominating it. the cable <laughs> shows this week. I think, I think other boards have. Yeah. I think other boards have more attention paid to. Well, them especially this week, this week with the budget comments week, flying yeah. around. Um, was there were a bunch of meetings last night. They're at the library, right? Or they weren't. They're supposed to be the there, was, there was a meeting here last night. There's many meetings. There's one tomorrow there was, too. Okay. Well, it was supposed to be the tenth. Was supposed to be so one of the budget meetings, and I couldn't. Get, I was wanted to see what was going on, and I tried to get on our, you know, the, the public and channel. And it, was it wouldn't. About one of them said it wasn't working. The other one had some consonant. Hmm. So, yeah, I, so I didn't. I didn't hear. Yeah. I went to a budget meeting. Talking Before about Christmas, cutting foreign and it was at the library. They had like really? the, the eighth, ninth, tenth, and twelfth, or eleventh, and seventh, eighth, ninth, and twelfth. It was. I watched several of those, and um, I thought for sure they'd be having streaming these live. But anyway, um, well, asking it. Yeah, anybody, you can't stream from there. No, we. So the only thing, if, if we're, are we on to the sixteenth? No, you might want to vote 19. on the sixth. I would like to vote on the sixth. I move sixth. we uh, approve the minutes as uh, amended tonight. All those second. Second. All those in favor. Okay. In December. Fourteenth. Fourteenth. Um, I just uh, that was the separate individual yes. one just before Correct. the training. Yeah. You were not here. I chaired that. So I sent you an email about election? that. No, I, I didn't have any changes on the 14th. That was. We all agree? Yes. Because that was just before the training over at the library. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, she, she did such a good job chairing it, I didn't even know Rebecca wasn't here. How's that? Hey. She's got more experience. Yeah. Uh, do I hear a motion? Motion to accept the minutes of December 14th. Second. All those in favor. Okay. And I know we have a bill hidden in here somewhere. Water and sewer. Yeah. So that's the uh, Pearl Street parking area, your favorite place. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Sometimes I think the, you mean it's the, every the conservation land? Yeah, the one that goes in there. We pay because we have a curb cut. So we pay water and sewer yeah. on that curb cut. Fourteen usually right around fifteen bucks, but thirteen fourteen tonight. Thirteen fourteen bucks a quarter, right? Mm. Yep. I move Next to pay it. The, the parking lot behind my house. Yeah. 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 So you have a curb cut. So what is that? Is that a it curb cut to protect to the, the runoff today. basin or something? Or I don't know. That's how we asked them why conservation is paying this and we try to get out. What of is a curb cut? Is that is that like a storm drain? It contributes There's no runoff. curb there. Right. Uh, and that's why I'm going right. to pull double There's an access. Yeah. It comes off the, uh, uh, off the road. A town road into this piece of property. So that is a curb cut. It's a curb cut. Okay. Really? And you're paying water and sewer? $13.14. There's no running water or sewer in there. Correct. You're right. So this is like. It's, the, it's for the this privilege for the, of using the road. This is the height of, of bureaucracy. Government. You know, this is like what, <laughs> it's like we're trapped. We, I, we, I took this well, to them, and we were actually being paid, charged more than we should have been, and they gave us a bunch of reductions for several months, but 
and we've run out of all that goodwill. But this, yeah, this is exactly, this is crazy, but, uh, you know. It is crazy. I mean, it's 13 bucks, what are you going to do? But it's still, it's, it just seems like a odd way to parse out and, and, well, and spread out the expenses in the and, town. Well, let me ask you, though. I mean, for, uh, is it Kirchian? There's, there's a drive-in to Kirchian, isn't it, off of? Kirchian Woods? For mini parking spot right there. We're we're both Kirchian Woods. So you're right. You're right. I'm no, we'll actually know they're not going to say anything. That's off of Haverhill Street. <laughs> no. No, it's off of like Blueberry, right? No, no, but it's off Buckberry, of Buck Dollar, no. not Franklin. It's off of Franklin. It's off of a street off of Franklin. It's behind Home Goods. Yeah. Uh, no. I don't think it's there. Fox I mean, Kirchian Lane. Woods, when you're coming down. I'm at, it may not be Kirchian. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can get my bearings. Oh, my God. Kirchian's off Havel Street, pretty sure. This is so unbelievable. Every time I've been uh, telling that this thing doesn't work. Uh, 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 the veterinary clinic on Main Street. Meadowbrook. Kirchian? Okay, wait. Yeah. Franklin. It's off of so. Franklin. Right? Maybe. You're right. Franklin has oh, yeah. dividends. It's, it's huh? off of it's Fairchild. It's off of what is Kirchian Woods? Yeah, it's it's right behind that new development they're putting at putting at 1260 Main Street. <laughs> that runs into Kirchian Woods. Okay, but it goes it's, it goes all the way over to Charles because there's a big sign and a you know that it's not Kirchian. That's what I'm talking it's about. Kirchian Lane. It's Fairview or Fair. Meadow or Fair something. That's Bush off of Main King. Street. Be, yeah, that's, that's Fairbanks <laughs> Marsh. Fairbanks Marsh. Right? Off of Fairchild Terrace Park. That is what I'm talking about. That's Fairbanks Marsh. Redwood. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it is. It's Kirchian. Yeah. It's Kirchian. Yeah. It's Kirchian. There's a parking. There's a little curb cut and a per parking. A little mini parking lot with a sign. Whatever. Wall Street. Off of Franklin. Between just before Kirchian Lane, right? Does it come right out to Franklin? Mm-hmm. Pretty sure. Those woods go be, oh, all right, and they cross Chapel Hill. It's this little tree spot. Because I... Because there's this little cul-de-sac, and then this little tree spot, and then there's a whole bunch of plank boardwalk through those woods. And then it goes up a hill, because that's all wetlands here. Then it goes up a hillside, and kids have had fun playing paintball back here. But. What program is that, Chuck? This is um, a map the geo. It's from the town. It's on the town's website. Yeah, the Kirchian. Um, it says here. Anyway. Well, I'm not going to pursue whether. I don't see any. I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm sure it's owned by town, but if, you know, Kirchian was on Buck, Buckskin. Between <laughs> Adams and Kirchian Lane. Yeah. It, says, it says here that uh, Kirchian Woods is a 44-acre site located between Franklin Street and Main Street. There are four entrances. One is off of Franklin Street, next to Kirchian Street. The second is behind a house on Brentwood Drive. The third is off of Fairchild Drive. And the fourth is at the end of Brentwood Ave. Soon to be a fifth one at is the end. This the one you're of talking about right now. Right. Yep. Hmm. I never knew that came up there. I have driven by that a hundred times. I would. You didn't know. A There's thousand a times. Gorgeous not even boardwalk that was put in with a whole lot of effort. All the way through that triangle spot, and then it goes. What's then the, the name trail of that goes street up. right there? It's Franklin. Kirchian Lane. And Kirchian Franklin. Lane. Not Adams funny. Way. No, I've been past Adams Way a hundred times. Permitted back yeah. there. Well, and it's funny because, well, I used to drive down the street two and three times a day with my kids over Wood End. Hmm. Never even knew it was there. All it takes is a couple trees, and you can't see that parking spot. You drive in, yeah. it fits maybe two small cars. Well, we're not being charged for that one, so. Dad, did we get an approval? No, we didn't. 
13, 14. I Make hear a motion it. to approve uh, the water and sewer bill for $13.14 uh, Pearl Street. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? I, I think right. we should have it audited. <laughs> I think it's a little crazy to continue to pay this, especially because we don't generate a significant amount of revenue. Yes, yeah, how can I? Exactly. We, well, we, I mean, we have one bill. All right. Four 13, times a year. Thirteen four times a year. Based on that, we generate yeah. tons of money. Well, how can I? Nearly 100 expense committed to the town be generating enough revenue to pay for a water bill. It's, it, yeah, it, it it's got to get paid somehow, off. I guess. Um, Refunds. So, can I get can I get back to this 107 Main Street? Is is this all you know, Chuck? Is this, or have people called you and talked to you about this? No one called me. As you can see, the dates are. I just got October. At the very end. Yeah. It happened in October, yeah. day before Halloween. 107 Main was that was the uh, no the dielectric fl fluid. I thought that was on South Street. Well, it's okay. Sorry. Right, it's there in that South Street area. But it's a mineral oil. 164 South Street. Oh, yeah, that's what's it on the. Can you imagine what's underneath that minor key property that used to be a gas station? Mm. I don't think that little quart of dielectric is going to make much difference. Well, I'll read this and I'll read this and see. Oh, that's ridiculous. All right, it was a two-hour release. Take wood out of the ground and refine it, but you can't put it back in the ground. No. That's I. A little disappointed that we're hearing about a two-hour notification months after. But I'll yeah. look into this a little bit more. Are you going to ask uh, why we got notified late? Well, that's a good question. Very good question. So, yeah, I will. I know that... Um, Are they required on... on if we're not part of the process, and our bylaw doesn't require that um, if there's a cleanup that they need to get a notice of intent or a permit from the Conservation Commission. Right. I mean, it's handling the contingency, mass contingency. So. Right. It looks like it went through RMLD. All right. I'll look into it. Jeff Zager. Just out of. Curiosity, or to so we can do something about it with it for it. I I would like to look at it to see if there's any documented information that shows there was a release to the wetlands. You know, if it went to the catch basin and it was 25 gallons, uh, if how quickly did they clean it up? Uh, did they re did they get it all out before the next rainstorm? Did they clean the catch basin? You know. Um, dielectric. I don't think they would because it was mineral oil. Mineral oil is not. Baby oil. That's, no, that's they, not. They would still clean the catch basin. Yeah. It's not simple mineral oil. It's dielectric. It's an insulating oil that used to be called PCBs, but, right. the, but PCBs well, were banned, so they used something similar because they needed something chemically similar. Right, dielectric to, to just means that it's, so, it's but utilized. It's not, it's not baby oil. Right, but it's mineral oil. It may not be exact same chemical con 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 if, if confirmation was, as baby oil, but right, it's but mineral it, oil is. But if it warranted a two-hour release under the MCP, yeah. it, was a, it was a potential harm to the environment. Otherwise, it would have never. They would have looked at the material and said, "Oh, this is harmless material. You don't need to report it." They have a whole list of toxic substances, and they have. And it's also the the quantity too, the volume. Right. There's a there's a couple of criteria. It's either the quantity or the concentration that it was found or released, found in or released in bulk. So, yeah. so the fact that it was a two hour release means it, it is a potential threat to the environment. And they have you to say show. Two, two hour early release, saying since the pole fell over, it was down for two hours. Nope. So the so the hazardous waste laws in Massachusetts have like a triage 
um, set of set of reporting conditions. If it's uh, an immediate risk of harm to the environment or people, it's it's uh, you know it's a full-on fire drill kind of situation, which is called a two-hour release scenario reporting scenario. And that's what this is. And that's what this is. There's two other types of reporting scenarios, depending on the quantity or the concentration of the hazardous material that was released to the environment. There's also a 72-hour release, and there's also a 120-day release. So they triage the severity of sure. toxicity and, and harm to the environment. So in, in that other words, triage. it needs to well, be reported within two hours. When they, it, they, they have, the property owner must report within two hours of gaining knowledge mm -hmm. of the event, which gets tricky because then you say, well, I didn't know until my employee, my employee told me or so-and-so told down here told me. Or, you know, so it, it's tricky how that timeline really, really, truly starts. Sure. But so in this case, it would be nothing RMLD because it's one of their transformers, so they would That's, have had to. That's what I'm going to look at. Yeah. That's what I'm going to look at because what the first paragraph, the first bullet says is that the pole was located on the a na neighboring property and fell onto 107, the restaurant's yeah. property, and then spilled into the catch basin. So I'm sure you could and get a lot of people going, well, it's my property, but they did it. And, and then there's ooh. not a lot of oil in those transformers. It was 25 gallons, so that's plenty. Is that much? Yeah, yeah it's 25 it gallons. It's one of those big, you know, those big containers sure. that's well, mounted. But it's that's a 30 gallon. That's full of that's a lot of copper wire, too. I mean, it's a transformer. It's not right. Just oil. We had we had a release like that. Remember? I didn't realize they vacuumed out the in the garage area. No, no, we had it at the top of a street, and oh. it went down yeah. the street, and then it went through somebody's backyard and into it's right off the street. Uh, Van Norton. It's and then they came in and they vacked out the wetland area. You remember that? We went over there and we could smell the oil was still there. I, I almost so. hate to admit this, but you know, Aerovox is. What boxes? Aero, Aerovox. No, I don't. The company down in New Bedford that contaminated the the Sound and the Narragansett Bay because they used to make transformers. Mm -hmm. I sold them millions of dollars worth of compressors, literally. My company did. And they were going this massive cleanup the entire back of their yard. And they used to make transformers. And I, I, I was surprised to hear you say there's 25 gallons in that because of all the transformers that they used to make that I used to... <laughs> the process and, and you know get involved in because selling vacuum pumps and compressors. I'm surprised there's that much oil in it. Surprised. Well, that's what they reported. Well, then I'm sure there is if that's what they say. I just, and that's not. I, that's half a drum of oil. I think they're 30 gallon. I think they're 30 gallon canisters that are pole mounted. Well, they might be, but don't forget a, a, a 55 gallon drum. Think about that. That's half a drum. And yep. You know, that's... But that's what they look like up on those poles. They look like mini drums. Yeah, but don't forget, there's an enormous amount of like, copper wire and steel yoke and whatnot that's in there. The reason why they use the oil is because it displaces moisture. Once they create a vacuum in there, they won't get any more oil of, of moisture, which will cause an explosion because it'll expand and pop. Landers Lane. Landers Lane. You remember that one? Yeah. And, and we had a whole company do a... a well, it's the same company. It was, was it? Yeah. Okay. These guys work closely with uh, RMLD, and so I've seen them a couple of times doing it. But to get back into, you know, I think so. not only do you want to look through it, I, I, I do think if you want to take it on, you might say, you know, we'd like to know about this stuff. Well, we are, we are third on this chain. This went to uh, the town manager and then the Board of Health. When you think about it, what are we going to do with it, though? I mean, if it, and again, this is just for. What if, if so? If they notified us, what will we do? We're not going to run out there and try to clean it up. But what do we? What, what, what real? What real what, actions are are available to us? If to, it, our concern is is anything to a wetland. Yeah. I mean, if it, no, no, I understand that. But after the fact, what, what would we personally, the, we we the committee, what, what, what could we possibly do? On, on this one, they here? have to clean it up, right? Do we ever see the? Have to, we have to be. We could be involved talking with them and talking with DEP about what are they doing to clean up the wetlands and have they proven that any 
contaminants went to the wetlands. And what remediation? Well, I, I can see from an administrative point or, or an overseer point, absolutely, but you know, obviously we, so if that's, if, if, if that in fact, and I guess this kind of goes to my point, question, then we probably shouldn't be third on the list when it falls conservation no. land. No, so it happens. We ought, we ought to be notified and say, hey, look, you guys got to get involved with this to make sure we clean it up to your specifications. Yeah. So, so this letter came to town, or at least got mailed to town hall, December seventh. And I'm just looking this at still it. Happened. I'm just looking at it. Now. It was in October, right? And it was in October that it happened. So, huh. hopefully. And I, th and I think they're used to. It. You know, I talked to the engineering department, and they were saying, "Oh, yeah, that was uh, that was one of three that happened that time." And they they didn't bring up any concerns that we got it late. They they had confidence in the process, oh. but that's not our role. I mean, you defined our role right there. We're usually out there, you know, not as quick <laughs> as the fire department, but, you know, if someone's around pretty quickly and we want, and the fire department usually would look to us to say, hey, this is going towards the wetland. We need to stop this or we need to do something Didn't about this. Didn't the fire department contact us? Contact us on this that one that was down. Oh, what's the name of it? It, it was near the ball fields, remember, Anika, you and I went yep. down? So the last and that was quick. Yeah, it was. So the last correspondence on this particular project was sent from DEP to RMLD that said, we got notice that there was, um, that this event occurred and you need to do, and you need to investigate it. You need to put together an immediate response action plan. That immediate response action is, is needed to respond to the release of oil and hazardous materials. You know, there's, there's and that they need, uh, yeah, that DP is paying attention to this. Part so. of your review should ask those questions. Why weren't we, you know, yeah. notified back in October? Yeah. Or even if we were notified, why weren't we notified in when November When was too? the fire department? Was the fire department notified? I don't know if the, why the fire department would be notified. Usually they're notified for underground storage tanks, but not storm drains. Well, technically there could be a fire hazard. Then why not the yeah. fire of an oil can ignite? There's a company that we used to represent that makes oil water separators. They have this proprietary product called Zeolite. And yeah, the stuff is yeah. so good at absorbing hydrocarbon. It is, it's great stuff. And you can literally take the Zeolite after you pick up an oil spill and bury it in virgin soil, and it'll never leach out any of the, the hydrocarbons that's absorbed. It's phenomenal it takes it into stuff. Sus, it takes it into suspension, and it won't let it go. It's a phenomenal mineral. Yeah, it's a cool stuff. Okay. So I'll, I'll look into Hanson this. Ave. That's where the last one was. Hanson. Right. Yeah. So so it looks like the DP has determined that RMLD is the responsible party. What was that transform? Yeah, right. I can understand that part, but... They didn't knock it over, but they own it. Right. Okay. Right. Any other uh, business tonight? Um, we may be working on a certain section of the Certificate of Compliance. We haven't really found... Words yet, but um, we're trying to. Something I talked to you about, Rebecca. Uh, it's the uh, no salt or okay. yep. fluoride in yep. the driveways that are within the buffer zone of the resource area. Yep. Is there any state guidance you can get? I actually have. Uh, I reached out to a connect con connection that I had through uh, working as a private plow vendor for the state of Massachusetts uh, Mass Highway Department and I talked to someone that was at the, uh, the headquarters over in Arlington today um, and he gave me the number of a woman who is the supervisor for the state of Massachusetts for the assault, uh, assault control and remediation for the entire state. Um, I have a call into her, she hasn't got back to me. I did research a bunch of things, I come up with some um, so research that was done in the state of Minnesota, state of uh, Michigan, um, some alternative uh, chemicals that he used, um, and 
you know, basically the, the gentleman that I talked to was an engineer from Mass Highway said that they actually just, they, they put additives and they changed the concentration for um, the application uh, of concentrate per lane mile for the highway around any areas where there are private wells, reservoirs, or other sensitive wetland areas. Um, and that's kind of how they handle it. And the state of New Hampshire actually has several different ways that they handle it. Uh, but I, I figured that, uh, you know, why not get the person that handles that for the state of Massachusetts and is the one that's charged for that as her job for the state. And you're not going to find out that they do anything but dilute the, the salt content. So oh. even the slurry that they talk about is a slurry of salt. So. Yeah, but you know, years ago, many, many, like back in the 1800s, the French biochemist said there's no such thing as a, there's nothing, there's no such thing as poison. There's only such thing as poisonous doses. So it's anything in, in, in a light enough concentration is harmless. But it's the question is when does all of a sudden a little bit be okay and a little bit more is not? I guess that's, um, I guess that would be a nice bit of information to have because, you know. And then you have to think about who's, who's distributing it <laughs> and for what reason. You know. Who's applying it. The uh, discussion that I had with Chuck was around the fact that on the certificate of compliance it said that no de-icing chemicals may be used. That means nothing can be used. So any uh, eco-friendly materials those? can't be applied. If you no. say no, de-icing okay. chemicals so, can be used. Uh, let's go back. So I have granite stairs, and I'm not supposed to use salt on that. That's right. True. So yep. I can only use sand. Yep. To me, that's not a de-icing agent. It's not. It's but just, it is a, a it's safety. Just a friction. Yeah. yeah. And also the... the uh, you can use calcium chloride. You just can't use salt. Yeah, right. And the uh, interesting I, thing I, about... Uh, that. I wouldn't do... I'm not no. going to do it. Anything, I thought anything it, with chloride in it, um, calcium is the Calcium is it just a, it's not diluted enough. No, it's the it's the, I thought the chloride yeah, was the well. that's that's the problem. And if you look through it, that's what and then, and I'm saying every time you I looked into it, every time I found something I thought might work, it's not absolutely perfect or eco friendly, and there's always problems. So, what our order of conditions and our certificate of compliance require people who have driveways and there can't be many, but there are a few. To do um, is to use sand. I mean, essentially, without saying it, that's what it's saying. Yeah, sand's kind of a, it's sand's great, except it doesn't. A lot of these agents will allow the temperature to drop and not allow the water to refreeze, and sand just doesn't do that. Sand is a one-time on and then it's gone. Next time, you you, you might as well not have put it down. That's the only problem with sand. Sometimes these de-ices. We well, have to, to keep sand, it ice free, and you have to be vigilant about cleaning your driveway. And the patch we just went through with the cold weather it wouldn't have been a great situation. But with well, the weather warming up, so usually it snows, you clean, you, know, you throw down the sand. And this is a deed restriction, really right? Hmm? This is a deed restriction. It doesn't. Well, uh, property or is it uh, something yeah. saying he yeah. can't yeah. use no. it? No. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's that. Yeah. Yes, it does. You know. Aside from the fact that we can tell people they can't do these things, it's unenforceable. How do you how do you stop them? I mean, they this who's going to go who's who, who's going to be the salt police, so to speak. But I I often wondered if it wouldn't be helpful to try to get people to embrace the fact rather than slap them with this restriction or this this requirement or demand and saying you will not shall not whatever is try to get them to buy into the fact that, look, we're, we're here to help protect the things that make all of our lives better. You know, this is a precious habitat, it's got what, da 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 We'd appreciate it if you just use these yeah. kind of de-icing. These, these have a, a very small impact and probably not, not a compounding or long term, but if you use any of these, and you give them a list and say, would you be willing to at least comply with that? And I guarantee you, once you solicit people's buy into your belief, you get a lot more cooperation out of them than trying to hit them with a stick. I mean, as long as those those alternatives are readily available and cost effective. And, and a lot of them are. And they're not as good as the ones that, you know, good to 25 below zero, but they're still effective. I mean, they prevent people from falling and getting hurt. And so does sand, but it doesn't have that other benefit. The icing to it. factor. 
Yeah, ice is ice. There's a, a company, and as I found out, they're in uh, they're based out of Lowell, um, that make a uh, anti-snow and de-icing compound um, that actually uh, the best performance is actually put on the ground prior to the snowstorm beginning. Um, but it uh, is listed as something that uh, um, is uh, non-hazardous, uh, that doesn't cause significant environmental impact, uh, and not currently, not currently listed under SARA Title II. I, I called, called them today to try and get an MSDS and, and some kind of information from them, and, and uh, uh, I don't know whether they're maybe off for a week or something. I don't know. Maybe just so busy seeing what we've had for the last two weeks. But I didn't get anyone there in the phone calls that I made to them today. But um, I, I would like to get some information back from the the, uh, the woman that handles this for the state, especially for the, uh, the areas that are out near the Quaggan Reservoir. Uh, and, uh, you know, see what she has to say about that. Because I, 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 I get the fact that we, we should be careful and considerate as to what kind of compounds are going into the wetland areas and the waterways. Um, I just, I Let don't like you, saying you can't yeah. use any de-icing. Some um, of these places that you drive by, they say, the no salt area. Is that true? Is it no salt or low salt? Uh, it's actually the guy from the Mass Highway said, said it really isn't no salt. That's what I'm thinking. It's low salt. It's a, yeah. it's a, what it is is they actually, they dilute the concentrate and then they put additives in it. And believe it or not, one of the additives mm -hmm. is urea. That's what I was um, just thinking. Something else that they put in it is pickle juice. Is it like urea formaldehyde? Uh, urea is just, it's a, uh, no, it's not formaldehyde. Um, it's, the, it's an acid. It's an acid, yeah. And it's, you know, so they're, they're, the study that was in, in uh, Urea. Michigan has. Alpha meal, sugar um, beet juice. I saw you, I saw oh, this. I have that electronically. Juice. Sand uh, or coffee grounds. Acetates, formates, urea, uh, gl glycerol, and glycol, which is. Yeah. Well, the state of New Hampshire uses um, uh, waste grains and liquid from the beer brewing process. They actually take that and they cast that on the highways and use that as de-icing chemical. Um, but that in and of itself has... It's good use. You know, I like it. That in and of itself has, has its own uh, problem. Uh, Succinates. You're playing um, all the time. You know, uh, and then the other thing is chloride, but it's uh, uh, beet juice, molasses, it, it's called distillers solu sol solubles, and corn syrup are some of the additives that they put in to de-icing chemicals. So, um, I, but I think it comes down to what is readily available to, right. to well, this stuff that around here, and, and it's going to be a con it's going to have to be convenient and yeah. work. The thing that I just oh, told that's you that's, the more. that's made in Lowell, they sell it at Home Depot by the gallon. Oh, is it a, it's a brine? It's, is it a liquid? It's, it, it's that stuff, it's called beer ground. Um, oh, I saw that, yeah, beer ground. And, hey. and they actually, but it you did can, have calcium in it. What if? Um, it, it has, uh, uh, I thought they, everyone, I, that was something I looked at, I thought all of them had that. Oh, no, my, this my is. My only point was, you know, instead of looking at this as, um, you know, after the fact, hey, they, this homeowner wants to use salt. There is no salt police, and no one's going right. to go out and measure right. the, you know, right. see if check check That's out right. the soil or see how much salt's in the soil, and everyone has to take care of themselves. And they would, you know, one would blame him for throwing salt down, no matter where he lives, if it was a safety hazard. But when you look at a project, I mean, I feel like we'd want to get this project to pass. That's one of our that's one of our mandates. The other one would be to ensure that the wetlands are protected, and those are the conditions. So a condition to allow a, a driveway close to the wetlands, because that's the only place for it, properly would have a uh, condition to say you have to use no low salt, something like that, alternatives. 
uh, in that area. That's how we would make both halves of our job come together. Do they have a, a, a low salt mixture that you it's, can buy? It doesn't no, sound like it. It's the calcium that we need to be afraid of and there's, I didn't find anything and you know it's it's sand. I mean, I don't throw a lot of salt on my driveway or my steps, hardly ever. You know, we might get one one of those tubs a year. It might be where I live. The sun does blast on the front of the house, so you you shovel, and it's going to go away in a couple of days, no matter how much ice is there. Um, but it didn't do that over the last couple of days, over the last couple of weeks. But typically, it snows. It's 32, 29, and it gets up to like 38 or so every day. It starts it's to melt. melting. Yeah. Yeah. But let me just use the Hunt Street as an example. The guy here that came in <clears throat> and he did a project and he came in and asked for permission to the, the Conservation Commission to do the project. He now has, according to the Certificate of Compliance, he now has a deed restriction. This is something that runs with his deed. The person that lives directly across the street does not have a deed restriction that's on their deed running with their property, even though they're the same distance away from the wetland. And then you have, the third thing is, is that you have the town uh, uh, snow and ice control truck that backs down that street and pounds that street with straight salt, you know, as part of the snow and ice removal. There you go. So, you know, you have you know, a guy that's trying to protect his, his, his own property. And, you know, it's on a, on a, a scale of 2,000 to 1 that the, the town is doing something that we're not letting this guy do on his own private property because there's a deed restriction on it. So that's something that, that just being a deed restriction that I have, you know, well, questioned Not only that, about. but whatever the town puts on the town roads, that's going to all the wetlands anyway. Of course it is. Yeah. And you know, so, it, so, I mean, that's a bigger, that's a bigger picture. Right. Well, but I, I, but I guess my question is, again, for my, for my own edification, not to be contentious, don't misunderstand my, my, my point here. But, so what's, when you think about it, what's the point of asking somebody not to do something when you have a perfect example of how what they're doing just pales compared to what's being done to an exempt body. So the state says these are the mandates that we have to follow to protect the wetlands, and they go out there and they do just what they want to protect the roads. Why would they do that? That just seems to be talking out of both sides of your mouth, like do as I say, not as I do. That just, I mean, if I was a homeowner, I would use that as a perfect example of why you can't tell me what I can. Some conservation commissions have gone to their town and said, these are all going to be low salt areas or no salt areas. You can only throw sand down. And have we not done that, or I don't, I don't believe we've done no. that. Oh, but we haven't done sound that. like that. Yeah. We haven't done that because I think if we were to do that, we would actually have to talk to Mass Highway Department to some extent because no, I mean, the no, not on the not on the town release. roads. Yeah, right. Not on the town well, roads and and uh, on the state roads, well, they are supposed the, to take care of it. But now the problem becomes you you you're not solving dangerous driving conditions if you're not using something that gets rid of the ice. De-icing the roads makes roads safe, safer. Nothing's perfectly safer when they're dry. But it certainly is alleviating a lot of contributing risk to the safety of a driver. So there's obviously a compromise, but I just guess the question is only, seems kind of like you know, we can wave our finger, but we can't really feel good about saying no. One of the things I discussed with Chuck is that, that you know, one of the biggest concerns that I had is, is not leaving the door open to use something that's um, uh, less caustic, less restrictive for a homeowner to use, but de-icing. That's the only real, but biggest thing that I discussed with Chuck because it, it actually puts a deed restriction on their property. Because if you say, no, you can't use any de-icing chemicals, that means if you went out there with tea and put it on your driveway, you're de-icing your, your driveway with tea. And I don't, I don't mean to sound pejorative by saying that. But no, it doesn't say that, Dave. It says, no. it says, e.g., 
sodium chloride, potassium chloride, and whatever the other one is. So it doesn't say T. Does it say no? Does it say no? That's what I asked you the other day. Does it say it no de-icing de chemicals may be used? Yeah, it says no, no de-icing, e.g., sodium, potassium, and uh, calcium chloride. Sodium, potassium, calcium chloride. Yeah. Right. So you can dump antifreeze on your driveway. Yeah, you could, and you could use. <laughs> I, I actually, when I read it, I said we're basically telling everyone to pound sand, but I only thought that I was telling me to. Yeah. Well, sand. actually, I. That's I, all you I, can use. That's In terms of an approach, though, what if we did this kind of as two steps, because I'm still not sure what we're trying to get at, but perhaps what if we came out with something as guidance for homeowners who are interested in being environmentally yeah. Yeah. Be, you know, friendly, great. sort yeah. of a curious to know what we would like you to consider putting on your driveway to de-ice. Here's, mm -hmm. here's a list. I like um, that approach. Well, and so you, we start with that. But clearly, if we're talking townwide, that's a scale up, mm -hmm. and it requires a lot of interdepartmental discussions and communications and vetting, and because the, the town's going to want to see, does it work, and is it going to work for our budget? Well, I, I wasn't suggesting we take on the town and. and but I, I see those as that, two possible ways. I was I was thinking more along the lines of how. You know, telling somebody they need to do something versus having somebody feel like they want to do something is a huge difference in how much they'll cooperate. Well, I like the idea of enlisting their um, their sense of um, caring about their environment. This is a this is a life support yeah, plan. I mean, that's what it why is. Why can't why can't we come up with um, cost effective? Not not just a list of stuff that's not yeah, so harmful. And mm. In and San could we put those with our orders of conditions as an add-on? Sure, as part of a maintenance, monitoring and maintenance, yeah. mm. operations and maintenance plan for every little... One of the things that I said, instead of saying no de-icing chemicals, or de-icing chemicals such as, was to list the, the what was the three? The sodium, potassium, and calcium chloride. So, yeah, sodium, potassium, and calcium chloride. And then just say, comma, however, eco-friendly methods and or sand may be utilized to, for de-icing. And that's where we, and we got stuck there because there was no, it, I didn't find any eco-friendly ones that didn't yeah. have, uh, yeah. have the calcium and chloride in it. Well, this one here says it's eco-friendly, but. Well, they, a lot of them do. Okay, yeah. but so they, we right. have, they have so less. you need to look at the MDS. Right, MSDS. Yeah. Right. MSDS, yeah. and so. Okay, we could talk about this all night long, no, we but can. I don't want to. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, then. What else do we have to talk about? That's it. Okay. So uh, it sounds like we're going to, me and Dave will keep, if anyone wants to chime in, okay. just send an email to me and Dave, and we're going to try to develop a list. We're going to try to... I mean, it's not whatever Dave just said, you know, these aren't allowed, but these are, whatever, however you worded that. Yeah. That's, that's, well, you know, the, that's these, these three, the, look at. The, the calcium, potassium, and, and sodium are not allowed. Uh, however, eco-friendly alternatives and or sand may be applied for the icing under such conditions. And I think that we should just remember the next time a, a house comes up with a, you know, a driveway in the buffer zone, right. to kind of think that, hey, this might be a question we should ask the homeowner. Right. or the builder, you know, we have this restriction, how do you feel about this restriction, what, you know. Or pose it so, this is where the salesman and the coach and consultant is in, pose it so you're, you're, you're asking questions that are going to almost require a positive answer. You don't want to create that, well, we say, you say, we, so we you're living in this environment, this is a tire, or the or building here, we want the homeowner to try to understand and, you know, make it, make them feel like it's their idea to want to care. Mm. You know, but it doesn't have to be a long-winded thing, but, and if you need some help writing verbiage for this, I'll be glad to help because I, I can profundify simplicity at the drop of an issue. <laughs> no problem at all. Okay. There you go. Right. <laughs> That's what politicians do. They for fun to find some motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Here, here. Thank you all.
So that's funny. I guess in Michigan they're considering...